Hi, I'm Denise. I'm here to do a quick overview of all the lessons from pre-K to grade six on Music Play Online for the first week of October, starting with pre-K. Pre-K begins as always with time for music, clap your hands, and of course you're trying all different places that you can keep a beat and different ways that you can keep a beat while you're doing this. And hopefully by now tapping on beats so that children understand that beat is like your heart, has a steady pulse, and it's the pulse of the music. Warm up with Bobo. Bobo is always fun. Move to the beat. I will make some new ones, I promise. Uh, listen to Eric Carl Opposites. This is a book you probably have in your library, in your school. If you do, read it to the students instead of watching it on screen. And then the song, Open, Shut Them. It's all about opposites. And musical opposites are the basis of the curriculum for pre-Ks. Pre and here's a demo of all the movements for Open and Shut Them, but I'm sure you don't need this. You'll figure this out on your own. There's a video on loud and quiet sounds, identifying what's loud, what's quiet, and you can always reinforce this with little poems and chants. Invite the students. Would you like to say this with a loud voice or a quiet voice? Um, Way Up High in the Apple Tree is a good little poem, again, for practicing high, low sounds, and you can do it in a loud voice or a quiet voice. And here's some movements you could use or make up your own. Letter T, Canadian Thanksgiving is the first weekend in October. So turkeys appear a little early for our American friends. Bring this back in November when you have your Thanksgiving. Turkey Tango is one of my favorite of the alphabet songs. You're going to love it. Here is Turkey Tango and we tango this way and we tango this way and the little ones really enjoy this. Counting song is again to give your littlest ones a repertoire of simple songs so that they can learn to show the high and low sounds and the sounds on a beat long before we ever label it label it here's movements for counting song if you need them i love the falling leaves song and my leaves are all turning yellow and my husband's been out in my yard raking leaves all week because they're coming down big time right now a um, little later again in some of the states so find a scarf move to falling leaves, and we end with skin and rink. And enjoy this lesson with your pre-Ks. In kindergarten, lesson five, October week one, we also have a leave song coming. So we have welcome to school. We have I am a pizza, which is again, one of my favorite, favorite, um, echo songs. It's a call and response. So your little ESL kids, your little language, English language learners can, can do this song with you because they hear the echo. They only have to remember this much lyrics. And this is one of the best ever. Hey, hey, look at me. Simple song. And again, the simple songs are included so that you can start naming high and low sounds. And maybe with kindergarten, maybe not till grade one, you might label the high sound as so, the low sound as me. So, hey, hey, look at me. I am clapping. You can see and then clap eight more beats. And this is another good one. Invite the children to find different ways that they can play those eight beats. Get them creating simple, simple, simple creations by creating new verses. So make up their own movements, jumping, swaying, twirling, nodding, whatever you can think of. This is a great interactive for preparing kids to teach SOMI. Step one, show how the notes go higher and lower. And if I press the play button on it, Ready, go. Hey, hey, that's what I want the students me. to do. I want them showing with their arms how the notes go higher or lower. This does it beautifully. And now if I press the play button, Ready, go. Hey, hey, it shows the melodic me. contour with dotted lines. And now, hey, hey, look at me. Okay, so the first one is, hey, hey, that'll be this one. Look at me. I am clapping. You can see. Um, we used to have an app that did this and 
You don't have to buy apps now. They're all here included in Music Play Online. Um, the Autumn Leaves song, a beautiful little scale song, do with scarves and sing it again. I really, I really like this song. Um, I use this for showing the body scale and my body scale is, go backwards so you can see me. Do is touching my toes, re under my knees, do, re, mi, fa, fa, fa is always my thighs. Do is the floor, re is my ankles, mi is my knees, fa is my thighs. So my tummy, la, my chest, ti is my head, and do is up in the air. So that's the body scale I use. And we have a cute little video that will show that. Draw shapes on paper plates. And I still have to make you a manipulative um, a printable that will do this. I think I just did this on the paper plates with felt pen and then wrote the names in. But this is fun because it gives kids something to play along with the shape song. So if you are holding a circle, please stand and tap your circle so they can tap their circle either with their hand or you could give them a little mallet that they could play along and then they get to play along with the band. Dr. Knickerbocker, I've made up some movements to go with it. I quite like the song. It's fun for the kids. And then we end with Skinnamarink. So that's kindergarten, lesson five for October week one. First grade. So first grade, lesson five for October week one. We have our welcome to music and we have Echo Bobo. I have some very interesting questions coming from students that teachers have sent me. Is Bobo really singing or is that Mrs. Gagne? Um, and you let the kids figure it out. Keep the beat with Mozart. This is good and I promise there are more Keep the Beat Cummings so that you don't have to do the same ones. In this, um, this week, this was for kids at home, uh, but it's so cute, I left it on here. So dramatize with stuffed animals, the, um, the 10 in the bed song. So we lined up 10 stuffed animals and rolled them off the bed one at a time. Could your class dramatize this? It would be so much fun. Two groups of 10, if you've got 20 children, if you have a few extras, have some be twins and uh, join up and fall off the bed at the same time. So here is the 10 in the bed song. This is a song from Ghana, JJ Kule, and it was sung for me by a lady who was born in Ghana, lived in Botswana, and emigrated to Canada, and she's a health inspector in the next town over. She remembered this game from her childhood and sang it for me. And this is how I've adapted a little bit for the kids in the class to play. They copy the leader, and then the leader tries to tag as many, of the, as, many as the leader can before they get to a safe place in the room. And I designated my safe place with hoops, which wasn't too smart because a few of them slipped. So designate your safe place with um, packing, masking tape, uh, preferable painter's tape. We've got a new uh, video about Ghana and Marilyn Pottage, my friend who um, lived a year in Ghana when her father was helping um, Canadian development, has been back to Africa and created a foundation to help educate girls in northern Ghana where it's uh, more rural and there's less educational opportunities for girls. So video is very interesting. It comes right out of Marilyn's experiences. I can sing a high note. I can sing down low. We're still practicing high and low like we did on the hey, hey, look at me with the little people. And here's a class demonstrating the movements to it. Um, high and low listening examples this time. This is a bird in aviary and elephants is the low sounds. And you get to move with me to the elephants or you make up your own movements, have the kids copy you. Play the high-low game. This is one of the simple comparable games, but really a good game for getting kids to solidify in their minds, which is high, which is low. Little people get quiet loud really fast. They get fast slow really fast. High and low takes a lot longer and lots more practice. Print or make an alphabet pointing page and use it to 
uh, tap the alphabet letters with rock with the alphabet. To do this successfully with the kids, I would go to the gear wheel tool and slow it down at least three quarter speed. And then they will have a lot more success pointing to the letters. can't do that at performance tempo, but I can slow it down and then I can point to the letters as they go. If the kids have the alphabet pointing page in front of them, they can point on the page. And first grade students, yes, they should know their alphabet. Not all of them do, especially our COVID kids. Um, this is a Canadian version with the last letter being Z. This is optional for Canadian Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for. I would do I like turkey with all the kids, even though it's not American Thanksgiving. It's just a fun chase game and um, kids enjoy it. I like turkey. I like turkey. Um, and they chase down the turkey and then the music class is over. That's grade one lessons, October week one, lesson five. Grade two, lesson five for October week one, reviews Tony Chestnut because that's way too much fun. Um, or sorry, it teaches Tony Chestnut, reviews John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, play I'm the fastest turkey and um, optional Thanksgiving songs for our Canadians. So we start with Welcome to Music. I've changed the Echo videos to the beautiful Maya, who has... Um, Echo what I sing. And you'll notice there's a little accompaniment track with this. So the kids are playing within the key. Um, and this matches the notation in the song that follows time to play. So when I do time to play, they're already in the same key, have used the tone set already. And if you go halfway through the video, you will switch to solfa. And because the kids have just done that solfa pattern, I'm hoping they'll be able to sing along with the solfa note highlights. Otherwise, simply pause the video and have them echo so that they learn the solfa. What instruments do you have in your classroom? Woods, metal, shakes, scrapes, oops, that looks kind of silly, uh, or drums. And then we do the time to play song, improvising during the B, C, and D sections. So improvising means to make up the music as you go along. But if you want to do this as a composing activity, instead of improvising, you could have the kids use this template and create their own 16 beat rhythm. And then you play one of them during the A, another one during the B, another one during the C. Two ways to do this, one is on paper, the other with the rhythm composition tool. So use option one or option two, depending on whether you have devices or no. And if you don't have time to actually write out a composition, if you've only got your kids for 35 minutes a week, just improvise because it's going to be difficult or do the composition as um, do the composition using this as a class activity and model it for the students, um, even if you don't have time for the individuals to do it. Tony Chestnut, favorite, favorite song. I love this song. Lots of fun. Here's the movements for it. And it's done in multiple tempos. So the purpose of this is to practice different tempos. So I have led you now to the Tempo Interactive Tool. Normally it's in the toolbox under Concepts. I love this tool. You choose the tempo you want to go and then it will play at that tempo. Largo, slow. But if I switch to Presto, all of a sudden I am going touch, touch, touch. This is an excellent tool. It doesn't matter to me that kids know Largo really slow. What matters is that they can put it into a musical context. Um, Brahms Hungarian Dance, Rob Delgadio gave us permissions to use his dramatization of this. This is a beautiful, wonderful way to introduce Hungarian dance to your students. John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt was introduced in the last week. If you still have your tempo cards, do the tempo activity again.
I'm the fastest turkey. I, I have actually loved using this song and it's call response. I've used it to assess how well kids are pitch matching because they're not shy about singing solo when they're singing as the turkey in the game. So even if you're not celebrating Canadian Thanksgiving next weekend, play the turkey game with your kids. It's fun. And then save thanks a lot. If for our American friends, save it till November and the music time is over. That's grade two, lesson five. I'm going to grade three, October week one, lesson five. And um, we, again, I've changed the echo videos so that we have beautiful Maya echoing so me and do patterns. And then when you uh, go on to um, the song Pass the Beanbag, the kids have this in their heads already. I've also given you a staff template. You can use pennies, you can use bingo chips. If you don't have any in your classroom, borrow some from one of your classroom teachers because they'll all have them. And when you play match the melody, instead of having kids call out the answers, um, level A has two choices, level B and C have more. But when you hear this, so me. Instead of having them point, it's uh, hold up fingers, it's answer one, you instead have them notate the answer on the staff. It was so, me, do on the staff. Now, when they get to pass the beanbag, it's a do me so song, and they've done lots of practice with do me so, so they may be able to clap the rhythm and sing the song in solfa. And if they can't, teach it by rote. Here's the, um, the song video for you. And then you choose instruments to play. And we're choosing the instruments to play with the song Shake the Papaya, which is lots of fun. I would definitely include some shakers in there, maybe some drums. Optional, compose a rhythm to go in the B, C, or the D sections. The other option, if you have shit less time, is simply improvise. But here's the composition template. Here's the composition tool. If you have one-to-one -one iPads or Chromebooks, either works just fine. Um, I'm a big believer in print, and I, I think it's really important that kids start to write the rhythms down. So when they've composed a rhythm on here, I would have them write it on a piece of paper so that they practice notating those rhythms. Then we sing and the, um, the theme is the A section and the kids would either improvise or play compositions. Mama says no play, this is a work day, up with the bright sun, get all the work done. If you will help me climb up the tall tree, shake the papaya and you can see it goes by really quickly if you want to slow it down using the gear wheel tool. Here is a cup game to go with Viennese musical clock, and it's actually very simple. Clap, clap on the cup, ti ti ta, clap, pick up pass. Kids can do cup games successfully. This was grade two and three students. So third grades can do cup games successfully, but the key to it, hold that stack of cups in front of you and pass them out to the kids one at a time. I always pass counterclockwise. I'm very consistent with that. So I pick up, I set down to the person on my right. Now two of us pick up, set down, then three of us pick up, set down. And if you do that, the kids are forced to go in the correct direction, which for me is counterclockwise. And it works really, really well. I had a few little ones in here in this demo getting a bit mixed up. If I have one child that really struggles, I'll put them on my left side and I'll pick up two cups and pass both to help out the one that struggles. Turkey Lurkey, again, a little chase game intended for Canadian Thanksgiving, but Lots and lots of fun. Kids love chase games. If you have time, teach it. And here's a demo of the chase game and an I'm thankful song that's uh, for Canadians and Americans wait till November for that. So on to grade four lessons. 
So the grade four lesson five for October week one reviews Chester, goes on to teach the canoe song, does a little bit um, of learning about handle in here. So Chester, have you heard about Harry? I did this this week with my children's choir. They love this song and they did really well with it. I have them echoing do, re, mi melodies. We haven't got to the solfa where we're doing mi, mi, re, do, la, la. That pattern hasn't been recorded yet, but we can still do the mi, re, and do and set them up to practice it and match the melody, mi, re, do. And here's the staff again. Have them notate their answers for mi, re, do, as opposed to having them um, just show finger one, two, three for the answers. Canoe Song <clears throat> was written by Margaret Embers McGee, and uh, it's a lovely little round that the kids really enjoy. I've included the ukulele guitar arrangement. If you have ukes or guitars in your classroom, teach the students how to play it. Even if you're not doing a whole ukulele unit, they could learn to do it quite easily. I guess another option would be to teach the ORF arrangement for canoe song, which is simple. And I should add it into this unit. I'll make a little note to myself to add ORF. Either or is great. Um, here's a challenge to name the solfa notes, but if you don't do solfa notes, if you just do pitch letter names, skip that activity, goes on, go on to the pitch letter names. This will really help the kids. If you haven't started recorder yet, when you do start recorder, if you've been naming notes through the whole term before you begin recorder, recorder is gonna be simple because then you just have to show them where their fingers go. They already know how to read the note. Learn about the composer, George Frederick Handel. That's a little short video. If you want longer, we'll be putting up the full length 50 minute made for HBO movie, Handel's Last Chance on the website shortly. We're just finishing the first set of worksheets before we put it up. And it's a great video. It will be in units, listening, and it will be Handel's Last Chance. And it will be in English, French, and Spanish. Here's instruments for you to use and play along with the concerto. I said, use two kinds of instruments. One play with the strings, the other play with the organ. So this is a good chance for kids to hear an organ, which we don't often hear. Here's another um, rhythm play along. And this is to practice the ti ta ti rhythm. Canoe song, ti ta ti 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 ta. I want my fours being able to read that rhythm. And so I've actually given two and I want them to compare and decide which one they like. The accompaniment is quite different and I some might like that rhythm or that accompaniment and some might like this one. And it's a good chance to compare two styles and tell which one they prefer. If you have extra time, and I think I've packed this lesson pretty full, but if you do have extra time, um, try some of the new games in the game section. Lots of them and lots of fun. Going on to grade five, lesson five. Four White Horses was introduced last week and um, a couple of the comments on Music Play Teachers Group made me realize that perhaps I should put a little more game instruction in the modules. So first of all, review the song. If you remember the game, play it. If you don't, watch the video that follows. But I've put in here um, some better instructions for teaching the game. So first, when I teach a clap game, I'm partner with all the students in the class. So try this with me now. I'm your partner. Clap own hands, partner's hands above. Own hands, pat your knees. Sorry, I did that wrong. Own partner, own side. Own knees, own side. Let's do that again. Own partner, own side, own knees, own side. When they have that really well, teach them the part for pair two. Own knees, own side, own up, own side. So you can see that one pair starts by going up, one pair starts by going down. When they've done both parts successfully, you put it together and pair one starts up 
and pair two starts down and you all do sides at the same time. It's really cool when you get it, but I'm sorry, I apologize for not giving those directions in lesson four. I will add those to lesson four so that um, next year you'll have them when you need them. So this, it is a fun game when it, it looks really neat. So one pair goes up first. So fun game. There is a really nice ORF arrangement for this. Some teachers have full classrooms of ORF instruments and can teach the whole ORF arrangement. Um, it looks like a lot of notes, but it's not really that hard. The bass part is just G and D rest, G and D rest. Um, if I had a bass boom whacker that was a G, I would play that with the yellow orange, orange boom whacker, that's the D. And I could play those on boom whackers if I don't have ORF instruments. The tubano part, it's intended for tubanos. If you don't have a classroom with tubanos, substitute whatever drums you have. If you have hand drums, ti-ta, ti-ta, sh-ta, sh-ta, sh, ti-ta, ti-ta, sh-ta, sh Gosh. Substitute whatever hand drums you have. The guero part. Um, is nice, but maybe you don't have gueros. Maybe instead you have those rhythm sticks where one is smooth, one is serrated, and you scrape. Or maybe you substitute uh, pool noodle scrapers. Anything that's going to give that scrapey sound. So if you have ORF instruments and you are experienced and love teaching them and want to have your kids do it, teach the full arrangement. If you don't, choose one of those parts as an ostinato. And I would probably choose Tubano part or Guiro part and have the kids do it um, as an ostinato and see if they can do the ostinato and sing the song. Initially, two groups. One group does ostinato, other group sings the song. Switch parts. And then the ultimate challenge is, can you do the song while doing the ostinato? Four white, four, I can't do it. Ti-ta, ti-ta, sh-ta, sh-ta, sh. Four white horses on the river, hey, hey. I can't do it. So your kids probably can't either. Divide into two groups and have one do the ostinato, the other sing the song. And here's instruments that you can choose to play the ostinato on. Again, substitute freely. Not everybody has ORF instruments. Here's a wonderful video about the steel pan that's included in this lesson because Four White Horses is a song from the Caribbean. And of course, the Caribbean is where steel pan orchestras were created. So I'm hoping maybe JJ and me will make us a lovely video about the area where steel pan drums came from. They did such beautiful travelogues for other areas. If you want to see them, they're in units, um, world music. And then we have a little lesson with, um, not a little one, this one's tricky, with Christian from Costa Rica, who does our body percussion unit. Christian is a lovely performer and he's he does challenging stuff. This one is actually quite challenging. Lesson six is considerably easier and we've included some music for your students to create their own body percussion patterns and play with. That's grade five, lesson five. And I like this lesson. Our middle school lesson, um, middle school lesson five, is going to use the song Mango Walk. This was introduced in September. Now we're going to give you the full ORF arrangement, and I'm showing the video on the steel pan with them as well. Same idea with the play along videos. Listen to play along video one and play along. It's got the tee ta, tee ta rhythms that Mango Walk uses. Video two different style. Which do they like better? Compare the two styles and that's a, a very neutral way to compare styles of music. Review Mango Walk and now again this particular ORF arrangement is really challenging. You'd have to have an incredibly strong group of sixes to be able to do it but I could isolate one of those ostinato patterns and do it with the song. 
This says bongo. Again, if you've got frame drums, do it on frame drums, whatever you've got. If you've got bucket drums, do it on bucket drums and try it. Maybe have your kids write their own ostinato parts to do with um, mango walk. Here's some examples that are simpler than what's in the ORF arrangement. Ti, 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 ta, ta. I'm sorry, I don't do, do, day, do, day, do, do. I probably should add that in. Example two, ti, 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 tika, ti, ti, ta. Ti, 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 tika, ti, ti, ta. Example one, pretty easy. Example two, more challenging. Example three is measure one of the bongo part. Ti, tika, ti, ti, tika, tika, ti, 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 tika, ti, ti, tika, tika, ti, ti. And that would be considerably more doable for most classes than the full ORF arrangement. Here's the video about the steel drums. Mango Walk comes from the Caribbean. Steel drums come from the Caribbean. And then we have Christian's body percussion. Even if the kids did this last year in fifth grade, this is challenging stuff. I've done this before and I still have to really think when I'm doing it. Review of lesson six, this one is simpler, and then create their own body percussion. So that's a complete overview of our lessons for pre-K, K, one, two, three, four, five, middle school, or six, six, seven, eight, really, um, for the first week of October, October week one, and this is lesson five in the music play sequence. Thank you.